X3 allows you to scan irregularities in the soil such as cavities, tunnels, grottoes, tombs, as well as metallic objects deeply buried in the soil. It comes of course with our wireless Bluetooth control box and also a long life battery, all the shaft. Everything is controlled by a laptop, including our DRS 3D software. You can mount it on the shaft directly. You control all the scan with the provided Bluetooth joysticks. It comes with two probes. The first probe is a magnetometer 60 cm 8 sensor. The second one is a magnetometer that is like uh, 100 cm wide and it's better for a larger object and you can scan any direction you want. So you have both probes in the X3. X3 is actually a better version, an upgraded version of our world acclaimed X2. Now we will show you how it works on the field. We're going to introduce you the two different kinds of antennas that come with all DRS ProRadar devices. The first kind of antenna is what we call the magnetometer. The magnetometer is an antenna that consists of several sensors. You can have the small antenna that's like uh, 25 cm and has two sensors. You can go up to like 100 cm and you have 16 sensors. The more sensors you have, uh, the bigger the antenna is, the deeper you go and the more surface you will cover. You also get more accuracy and better resolution with more sensors. Um, with magnetometer, you always have to keep uh, the same direction, meaning you have to keep the north in the back. And uh, also with a magnetometer, sometimes you can have uh, a little problem identifying large cavities. It can mix up cavities with the ground. Uh, that is why DRS has worked on a whole new kind of antenna called the gradiometer. The gradiometer only has two sensors, a plus and a minus. Also, you can have it in three different sizes, 30 cm, 60 cm or 100 cm. But whatever the size is, you will always have a two sensors. The gradiometer is much better because you can go any direction you want. You can go north, south, east, west. You don't need to keep it keep the north in the back. And uh, also, it's better uh, to identify cavity. It doesn't mix ground and cavity. So you have better results on larger objects and better results also on cavities. Like magnetometer and radiometer, they complete each other. That's why X2, X3, X4 and X5, they all come with one antenna of each kind. DRS is the first manufacturer in the world to offer this to its customers. DRS has developed its own 3D software that you use with all its devices. We will show you how it works. You use this software to scan and give an interpretation to the results. So you have to start first the software. The software is very easy to use. First thing, you have to choose a language. Here, click on File, Language, English is good, but you also have eight other languages. Connection settings, okay. You have to select the number of column you want to scan and also the number of rows. And you see, it makes a grid. Each square measures 30 by 30 centimeters and it's a step. We always start on the lower right hand corner. And then, very important, you have to choose how you're going to scan. You choose to scan either parallel, you go like this, then you go back and again. Or you can choose zigzag. You see, you start here, you go like this, you step back, you scan, then like this, like this. Then you have to choose uh, which kind of scan you're going to do. Free ground scan, 3D ground scan is what you use for all our radar series, okay? Horizontal live scan and vertical live scan are used only with X1 and X5 and X1 Pro. And resistivity is for IRS or uh, the resistive feature of uh, X5. But here we're going to use ground scan. And then you just press connect. We would like to remind you that on each DRS device you can choose 
manual or automatic scan. For automatic scan, the machine will beep. So every beep, you will make a step. So it does like beep, you make a step, beep, you make a step. It gives you a reason. It's a very nice feature. Or you can use like manual feature. With the manual feature, every time you make a step, you just press the joystick. Okay? Now, let's see the file. We've just recorded an iron object. Here it is. Let's start with two dimension. You see, here you can see a red square, always on the lower right hand corner. So basically, we've been scanning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 steps by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, by 6 columns. So 15 steps of 3 meter, that's barely 5 meter, by 2 meter. So look, you can navigate like this with a keyboard. Or you can also use, sorry, this thing. There is an embedded keyboard here. Okay? But we will use this. Every time you move the cursor, you can see on the lower left corner that the value change, 122. Now here, where the object is, we have 235. Meaning that we definitely have a metallic object. How can you make sure it's a metallic object? When you open a file, you can see on the right corner a scale of color. If you, the metallic object is red, yellow and orange, if the total of the first two values, see 2.3 and 5.6, where it's barely yellow, orange, if the total is below 10, then you can imagine this target is metal. Let's see, 2.3 plus 5.6, that's 7.8, 7.9, so definitely Red here marks a metal object. But the blue, blue definitely we say it's cavity, but not always. It can also be a field that has been like turned. So here we have 84.8 .8 for the dark blue. If it is a cavity, it has to be 100%. If it's below 100%, it's not cavity, it's just ground, okay? So here, 84.8, .8, it's not cavity, okay? Here we have a metallic object, definitely, but it's not in a cavity, it's just in regular ground. How can we determine the size of the object now? Um, okay, we have three squares. Three squares for the length times 30 centimeters, that's 90 centimeters, let's say one meter. Let's imagine the width now. The width is just one square, see, one, two, three. So that's 30 centimeters. One meter by 30 centimeters, the buried object on our field test is basically an old rusty pipe, okay? Now, let's try to imagine uh, what kind of uh, depth we have here. Okay, so let's go 3D. Okay, you can see the depth is here. The first thing you have to do when you, do, um, when you open your file is tell the software which kind of soil you've been scanning. Here we use like sandy, okay? Remember that the percentage of humidity, the type of ground, if it has rocks or no, will really influence the result you obtain and you get on the software. So sandy is pretty neutral. So let's use these two uh, arrows on the left of the software to determine the depth. So the object starts around this, which is here, what, two meters, you see 199, and goes to, oops, sorry, to 270. So our metallic uh, pipe is below two meter and two meter point 70 deep, okay? Since it's a pipe, it's round, it's 30, 30 centimeter wide, so it's very good uh, it, and it's accurate. So you have 30 centimeter pipe, between 2 meter and 2.70 meter deep. Very interesting here, you can see that there is a very visible cut. When the red is cut like this, it's metal, but most of the time it's iron. When it's cut like this, it's iron. It means that the signal has been cut. And you have a really high percentage of chance to determine that this is iron. Finally, we'd like to show you this. Let's get back to 2T, you will see here. 
you see here we move the cursor and you see the object is here okay you see it's still moving here our object is here and you can see the value here look 235 let's me show you if we get back to 2d okay let's open this you see it's here Our value that interests is 235, 235, 235, 234, and it's row number four, one, two, three, four, you see, and it's step number 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Basically, it's here, you see, so it's perfect. You see the value here, 235, 235, 245, that's our metallic object, and you can see the scan value appear and are interpreted directly by a color in the software. So you see, it's very, very neat. You can determine the size and the depth of the object, thanks to our DRS 3D software.